Hi, I'm going to take you around this Redline Classic model and show you how to use it, how to set up and to obviously get ready for leaving uh, from your campsite. So first thing is that you, when you arrive on a campsite you'll need to get connected up on the outside. Um, on the Classic model you have the mains input just underneath the rear bumper here at the right hand side. Uh, so you plug in there and connect to your site. You will also need to get your water container, um, which was either supplied by us or you might have bought one separately, uh, which fits in this cupboard here. And you have a water pump that needs to be submerged in the water. So you'll need to put that, fill that up and put that in there. Also in this cupboard, you'll have your gas bottle. Um, which will be connected to the regulator, which as you can see from the regulator there, it screws onto the top. And then once it has screwed onto the top, you have this turning valve stroke tap that you just literally turn it to turn it on, clockwise to turn it off and anti-clockwise to turn it on. So once you've done that, you're connected to the main, so you've got power coming through to the van. You're also connected to gas and you're connected to water. Next thing you need to do is to come to the control panel and turn things on. So I'm just going to turn everything off for a second so you can see exactly how it would be set up. So from here, if you were connected to your mains, you'd want to turn your battery charger on. Over here is just a display that shows you your voltage reading of whichever battery you've got it set to. In this scenario, we're going to use it on the leisure battery. We could use it on the vehicle battery. I would say that most of the time you want to use it on the leisure battery, only using it for vehicle battery if you really have to. But you can also charge the vehicle battery or the leisure battery um, by plugging into mains and selecting that battery. So in other words, if you're at home and you just want to charge up one of the batteries, you select it on here, plug it into mains and away you go. Um, when you're on site, you want to put it on leisure battery and start using it from that. You have then a mains light switch that gives just power to the light switches themselves and also a water pump switch. Turning both those two on will allow you to, like I say, turn on the lights and also get the water through. There we go. Um, just above those you've got your main trip switches and you've also got 12 volt fuses. As we go up here you've got your two main sockets. Obviously you need to have that mains lead plugged in at the back to make those work. A light switch there for the under cupboard lights and a double USB socket. Now you can come through to the gas and you can light the gas using this by pushing this down and round and clicking on the igniter. Obviously we haven't got any gas connected up but if we did that light hold it down for a few seconds while it's lit, release, and as long as it stays lit, that means you've got the gas through and you can use any of the other gas items like the other hob. Um, because we've got the water pump turned on, all we'd need to do then is turn this on. You can actually hear the pump working away even though we haven't got the water connected. Um, so that just literally turns on and off and comes from there. Down on the floor you have your fridge and you turn that on and off by using this button here. So I was touching sorry, that button there. So you turn it on and off from there and then you adjust your temperature using this one and it goes from the small to the large. The larger the dot the colder it gets and if you want to turn it off just hold that and it turns off. You have this little piece up here that as you can see on the top there says vent. So when we close this, it leaves it slightly ajar, which is good for when you're in storage. When you're actually using it, you put it back into the other position, close it and it closes completely and makes a good seal. At the back here, you've got your rock and roll bed. To use the rock and roll bed, you lift up this lever and slide the bed down. This is going to be a little bit difficult to do one-handed, but I'm going to show you, try and demonstrate it as best as I can. Once you've got it to this position, give it a good push and then it clicks into place. 
okay and that's your bed ready to use when you want to release the bed and get it back up into the seat position you have this button here that you can press or using this lever here just pull it and that lifts this send section up a bit then you can just push it back and it clicks into the seated position at the front here you've got this swivel seat has storage under the seat here which you access by lifting up bringing it forward and there you go there's your storage and this one you've got the jack and the wheel brace and then you can click it back in you can also swivel the seat round um, so when it's uh, you're using it on the campsite you can use it obviously facing backwards to face the other seat over here but when you're traveling you must face it forward to do that you undo these four pieces here and here they lift up and sit over the end i don't know if you can see that little roll pin sits over the top there to hold them up and then you can there's two at the front two at the back of those and then you can push this seat forward and turn it round that one's a little bit more difficult to show you one-handed so i'll leave that and um, hopefully you understand how that works the roof here um, is easy to pull down the bed and you must if you're trying to pull the roof down pull them down separately so you pull the bed down first and then the roof down afterwards and what you're trying to make sure is that when you pull the roof down this all folds inwards so this section all folds inwards and you're not going to get it caught in the um, stays at the back um, so you do that using these straps here it's a lot easier to do with the seat facing backwards and you just grab the straps and pull the roof down now this is a two-handed job so i'll have to put the camera down for this one and then come back to you once the uh, roof is down and show you how to latch it right i've now put the roof down using the straps here and just pulling the whole roof mechanism down um, like i said before you've pulled the uh, bed part of it down first and then followed by the roof you must have a door open to do this um, so the air's got somewhere to go it makes it a lot easier um, so here you've got your straps that hold it in position whilst you're traveling they're double looped around the top there um, and then they literally just tuck through here and back through this clasp here which is easier said than done one-handed but is very easily done two-handed I think you get the message there they come that comes through and then you can get a hold of it So that's it. Normally, all I would do is literally just lift that open and then pull it through, but trying to do it one handed is a little bit more tricky, so excuse that. But hopefully, you got the message there of how that works. So, all you need to do is do that on both parts, and that's it. The roof is down and secure. You can go out outside and check that there's no canvas sticking out and also the roof is down far enough you can always use of course the handles here to give it an extra pull and then tighten up that as you do it obviously before leaving you'd have to make sure that the mains lead is disconnected your gas is turned off all the hob tops are closed down making sure first that the gas uh, hobs themselves are cool enough for the glass plate to go over the top of them turn the front seat round and then you're ready to go so i hope you enjoyed watching the video and it's all made sense um, but you can always contact us if you've got any questions thank you for watching the video